HDMI capture cards. There's a massive difference in prices, but is there really any difference in quality? Are you paying just for the name? Is the video really any better with more expensive products like the Elgato Cam Link? And why did I take it to a whole new level and spend like 1200 bucks on an HDMI capture card, which I know may seem a lot until I tell you why I did. But before we get into why I spent over a grand on one, let's look at the cheap and cheerful capture cards, the ones that retail for about 20 bucks against the $100 Elgato Cam Link 4K. First off, let's do a side by side. That's kind of the easiest way to determine if there is a quality difference. On the left is the cheap card and on the right is the Elgato. Now straight away, you can see that the cheap option, it's softer and the colors, well, they're a little off. The Elgato Cam Link, it gives a much better, a much crisper image. Now both claim to be 4K, but in my opinion, I'm really doubtful that this cheap version is. Now if you read the specs, it says it supports 1080 at 30 frames per second, which isn't 4K. Whereas the Cam Link, that supports 60 frames at 1080 and 30 frames at 4K. Now, reliability. Well, there's no real way for me to test this. I've used the Elgato Cam Link. I've used it for a few years and personally never had one fail yet. But as for the cheap one, to try and give it a real life test, what I've done for the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a lot of Zoom calls with private clients and I've been using the cheap one to give it a little bit of a test. And you know what? It's worked fine. So I couldn't really say that it's unreliable. Yes, the picture quality is crap. So we could say that it's reliable crap. So before we get on to the mother of HDMI capture cards and why I spent $1,200 on it, here's my take on cheap HDMI capture cards against the Elgato Cam Link. Now presenters will think nothing of spending a decent amount of cash getting a camera just because it produces video that is like marginally the better. They'll drop a grand on a lens because it's gonna be just that little bit sharper or led in just a little bit more light. So it leaves me speechless to think that after spending all that, someone would even consider saving like 80 bucks in exchange for something that's clearly substandard. So if you only need to connect one camera to your computer, my advice, go for the Elgato Cam Link. But what if you wanna connect more than one camera? Well, of course, you could just buy more Cam Links. And while there's not normally an issue when you're connecting, say, two HDMI capture cards, when you start to go past that, you can, and a lot does depend on your computer, you can run into issues with how many HDMI capture cards you can connect to your computer. It's all down to a thing called USB bus controllers. You may get away with more than two or three, you'd have to test. Now, the other option, if you want to connect multiple cameras is, well, you could just ditch the old HDMI capture card thing altogether and you could go for an ATM Mini. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a video on the ATM Mini, but because it's another effective way to connect cameras to your computer, what I am going to do, I'm going to give you the benefits and the drawbacks because on the face of it, the ATM Mini does seem like it's the perfect solution for multiple cameras, but it's not quite what it seems. But basically, you can connect up to four cameras. You can connect your mic all into one unit. And you can switch cameras using these nice big buttons. There's something nice about pressing a tactile button. And as you're switching between the cameras, you can add transitions. And if you use the app that comes with the A10 Mini, you can do all kinds of fancy stuff with it. And if you've got an older computer or a computer that, say, lacks the horsepower, then using a device like the A10 Mini, it does take off some of the processing off your computer. And depending on, on which model of the A10 Mini you get, you can also record all the connected cameras all at the same time. Not just the camera that you're actually presenting on, it records any camera that's connected, which is a big plus. And the ATM Mini base model is only $195 which is like only the cost of two Elgato cam links. But if you want the model that will also record and also allows you to do other things like stream directly from it, also have multi-view, then you're going to need the A10 Mini Pro ISO. And that's going to set you back 495 bucks. But alas, there's a problem. Well, there's actually a few problems, a few reasons why I don't use an A10 Mini. First, it only outputs in 1080 HD. 
and I like to record in 4K. And second, I like to use a program called Ecamm, which makes it so much easier to record and stream with. I'm actually currently recording this using Ecamm. And if you're interested in finding out just what a cool little application Ecamm is, I'll put a link below. What happens when you use an A10 Mini is no matter how many cameras that you've actually got plugged into it, Ecamm only sees it as a single camera. And that, it, well, it just makes it a more intensive workflow, at least for me anyway. I really wanted to love the ATM Mini, but the fact is, the lack of 4K and the fact that I can't switch between the cameras individually for winning Ecamm, that's what caused me to look for another solution. And that's why I spent $1,200 on the next solution, which for me, for me anyway, personally, works like a dream. Rather than having to have multiple HDMI to USB converters, which actually limits me to how many cameras I can have connected anyway, I wanted a solution where I could, I could capture 4K at 60 frames a second from multiple cameras. I wanted great audio quality, and I wanted it to be 100% reliable. And now using Ecamm, I can switch between the cameras with my Stream Deck, like that. Or I can even use my keyboard, like that. Plus I get the many benefits of using Ecamm, which just makes the whole process of recording in 4K or streaming so much easier. So what is this mythical device that I speak of? Well, it's actually a couple of items stitched together. It's a Blackmagic Deck Link card inside of a Sonic PCIe enclosure. And I'll put links below. And that's why I spent the money. What's more, I can actually expand this up to 12 cameras and I only need one Thunderbolt cable connected to my computer, plug it in, and each camera I add, it shows up as separate cameras in my computer and in Ecamm, and it's quiet. Not only does the enclosure have a super quiet fan, but there's also a fan on the deck link card, which you can hardly hear, and that keeps everything cool. So if you're gonna be adding more than two or maybe three cameras and you want a solution that is reliable, and something that you can add even more cameras to later, then check this video out next, and I'll show you how easy it is to put together. Anyway, I hope that helps. Until next time, bye for now.